Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out this $400 Lenovo desktop that I recently picked up on eBay. Now, whenever I run across a deal like this, I always post it up in my community tab. This was going for $400. I think they jacked the price up to $429 now, so it's $430. But this is actually powered by a 4th gen Ryzen APU. This is the 4300G. You can also get one with the 4600G or the 4700G. Obviously, those higher end models will be more expensive than these, and I've personally tested out the 4600G and 4700G on my channel, but I haven't been able to get my hands on a 4300 until now. So real quick, before we jump into testing, I did want to take a look at the insides of this thing, just to see if there's any kind of upgradability, and it actually looks like we'll be able to add a GPU down the road with something like this, because it does come pre-installed with a 260 watt power supply. There's no 6-pin PCIe connector, so a GTX 1050 or a 1650 would be perfect for a setup like this, when the prices come down. Now with this Lenovo ThinkCenter, it came with a 128GB M.2 SSD, and that's going to hold our operating system. It also came with a 3.5-inch 1TB drive and 8GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz. And to my surprise, for a pre-built like this powered by an APU, they actually stuck dual channel RAM in here. So we have two sticks and this can be upgraded to 32, but we're sitting at eight right out of the box. Like I mentioned, the power supply is a 260 watt and you could throw a GTX 1650 in here. I personally think that would be perfect for a setup like this, but prices on those are really high. So for this machine here, we're gonna be running on the integrated Radeon graphics because we do have that APU. And I've really been interested to see how the 4300G performs. So when it comes down to it, basic specs here, this is the Lenovo Idea Center 5. We have that Ryzen 4300G, four cores, eight threads, base clock of 3.8 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.0. We have eight gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz in dual channel. And as for graphics, we have the built-in Radeon 6 at 1700 megahertz. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Running Windows 10 Home, that's what came pre-installed on that 128GB M.2 SSD. We have that 4300G, 8 gigs of RAM at 3200MHz, and the built-in Radeon 6 graphics. Overall, as an everyday desktop, not talking about gaming or emulation yet, this would work out just fine. Like it sits right out of the box, you want to do some web browsing, light photo editing, and even video editing, this would work out. First up, let's test out a little bit of web browsing. Just to give you an idea. This thing is quick and it does come pre-installed with Wi-Fi 5. Unfortunately, it's not Wi-Fi 6, but we do have gigabit ethernet also. I mean, just browsing your favorite web pages and everything like that is gonna be a breeze. 4K video playback, the 4300G will not struggle with it whatsoever. Let's go up to 4K. We'll do stats for nerds, full screen. One drop frame on that initial load in, that's nothing to worry about. I mean, 4K video playback with the 4300G is super duper smooth. Just skip ahead a bit here. Still only got that one drop frame. Usually when I load in, it drops a couple more, but it's got enough power to handle it. Now in this video, we're going to run some benchmarks, we're going to test out some games and some emulation. And if the interest is there, I can throw a GTX 1650 in this or a 1050 and do some more tests in another video. Because as we all know right now, it's really hard to get a GPU for the right price. But if you pick something like this up to start with, with those integrated Radeon graphics, you could get up and gaming with it and then later on throw a GPU in there. Moving over to some benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core. I was hoping for a little more out of it. We got 1102 and multi 4412. Remember, four cores, eight threads. That's all we're working with here. So that multi core actually looks pretty decent. Next up, I ran PC Mark 10, total score of 5,185. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid, 12,489. Firestrike came in with a 2,840, and Time Spy, 1,040. And these scores are right in line with the other 4,000 series APUs that I've tested on my channel, the 4650, the 4600, and the 4700G. This is the lowest-end model that they're offering, and it's also the least expensive. 
So let's check out some gaming on these integrated graphics. First up, CSGO, 1080p, medium settings. I got an average of 81 FPS. It's very playable here, and if you did want to go up to high settings, you could do it, but you're going to have an average of around 65. Next on the list, Forza Horizon 4, 900p, low settings, got an average of 66 FPS. At 1080p, low settings, I was getting an average of around 61, but we did have a lot of dips into the 50s. When it comes to Fortnite, I've personally never had a lot of luck with performance mode, but with this little machine here, it actually worked out really well. I'm not exactly sure what resolution it sets at when you go to performance mode, because I can't change it in the settings, but I did get an average of 108 FPS out of this. And by the way, we're at 100% resolution scale also. Overwatch did pretty well on this machine, like it does on a lot of lower end machines. I mean, this is a very well optimized game. 1080p, medium settings, got an average of 67 FPS out of it. When it comes to GTA 5, if you're looking to get at or over 60, you will have to drop this down to 900p, normal settings. If you wanted to just run this at 30, you can take this medium high settings and lock it at 30 and it runs just fine. But if you want to get 60 or over, 900p normal is the sweet spot. Doom Eternal, 720p, low settings, averaged out at 43 FPS. I was hoping to get a little more out of it. We're at 100% resolution scale now. You could go ahead and drop that down, but we're already at 720p. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, 80% resolution scale, low settings. It's not ideal, but in a pinch, if you wanted to play this game, you could play it just like this because we got an average of 33 out of it. Now when it comes to emulation, this is where these 4th gen Ryzen APUs actually really shine. Here we have PS2 using PCSX2, upscaled to 720p using the DirectX 11 backend. We've got one of the harder games to emulate, Ratchet and & Clank, and it's running at 60. I mean, it runs great here at 720p. Next on the list, Wii U using SimU with that Vulcan back end, 720p, Breath of the Wild, it'll run at 30 all day. Now about a year and a half ago, this was really hard to run on high-end chips, but as you can see now, it's even running on the Ryzen 3 APUs. The devs have done an amazing job with this emulator. And finally, one of the harder ones to do with lower end chips, PS3. Here's RPCS3 using the Vulcan back end, Skate 3, and it's trying its hardest to stay at 60. I mean, it's doing a great job, but I have seen it drop down to around 56 every once in a while. Still pretty impressive because this really relies on extra threads, and we only got four of them here. So yeah, overall, I do think this is a great little performer. That 4300G is definitely chugging along. It's trying its hardest. It's, it's not a top-of-the-line machine whatsoever. This is not meant to be a gaming machine. This is more of a home-use desktop situation here. But with computer part prices right now, especially GPUs, I mean, this might be a great little option if you know what you're going to get into. Because as it sits coming out of the box, as you saw in this video, we actually got some decent performance. Now, it's not 1080p or 4K high settings with these games but that's gonna be really expensive in the climate we're in right now. 
And when GPU prices come down, you can add something to this, like a 1050 or a 1650. And by the way, this does have a disk drive. I didn't even realize it until I set it up on the desk. And it comes with a mouse and keyboard. Now, like I mentioned, if you guys want to see what this thing can do with a dedicated GPU, just let me know in the comments below and I can create another video. I do have this 1650 here that'll fit perfectly in this machine. We don't need extra power, and since this has a 260 watt power supply built in, we have more than enough for a card like this, and I got a feeling that this would give us some really good 1080p performance. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.